You know, what is it when we really come to a place to realize that we can, in the midst of hurt and pain and in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of, of confusion, in the midst of sorrow and in the midst of uh, a report that didn't go our way, that you can stand firm and say, God, you've got me in the best of times and God, I'm actually tested in the worst of times. That's when I'm really tested. That's where my faith really kicks in is in the worst of seasons. God, that's where the test starts and faith is really proven through the testing and through endurance and through perseverance and you come to this place. And just in a moment like this, an unscripted moment of just saying, God, I need to walk in that place to be restored again. I need to be uh, in that place of recovery of my spirit to come back to a place to really come back in to what it means to restore the joy of my salvation. And I love these moments, church. I love these moments because it leads right in to our, our time in the Word this morning about what it, what it looks like to really, to really pray. We're, we're, we're on this journey called When God Leans In. And, and we're going to be on this for several weeks about what it really looks like when, when truly the God of all power and might, the God of all creation, He leans in to show us great interest in what we have to say. And the recap from last week is just simple, man. We had a powerful service last week. And it was just, it was just the simplicity of Luke 18 when Jesus is telling this parable about the widow. She goes before the judge and he denies and she comes back and he denies and she comes back and he denies and she comes back and he denies and they played this, this silly game. And the whole idea was Jesus like, be like the widow where, where you are to pray at all times and watch this, he says, and do not lose heart. E even though we know that, that a part of last week, to know that, yes, Christ hears us, man. God hears us when we pray. He heard me the first time, and he heard me the second time, and he heard me the third time, and he heard me the fourth time, and I lean in again on the fifth time, and I lean in again on the sixth time. And yes, every time to know he hears me, and yet he says, don't lose heart. Just keep pushing. Just keep pressing. Just keep coming. This was all last week to catch up to where we're at this week to know that the Bible says that God hears us. And don't lose heart. Come and come again. And don't lose heart. Come again. Man, the idea, I love the idea that I'm not going to lose heart because I know that he hears me. That, that, that's my promise of this thing, man. That's my foundation that I'm not going to lose heart because I know that he hears me. Listen, Renee can ask me to fix the sink. And she can ask me the second time and the third time and the fourth time. And maybe she's going to lose heart because I'm not God. <laughs> I don't know if he heard me the fifth time to fix the sink. And then I try to fix the sink. I don't know if you live in that household. But you try to fix the sink. And, you, and the sink is smarter than me. <laughs> Honey, this is why I didn't want to fix the sink. Because... I don't do the whole plumbing thing. But, but please hear this. The point in that is just the simplicity of God isn't man. And maybe you've tried man and you've cried out to man and man has disappointed you. But I love the idea that God hears me. And the basis of me not losing heart is because I know that he hears me. Come on, last week we started in Psalm 116. Uh, if you want, you can turn to two places. We're going to be in uh, Philippians 4 and then Matthew 6, but I'm going to go to, this is kind of our, our verse for our series, When God Leans In. It says this, this is from the psalmist, 116, 1 and 2 says this, I love the Lord. There's, we, we, we can stop there, I love the Lord because. Well, we could go around this room. Why, why do you love the Lord? And we could have 500 different answers. And all right, all biblical, incredible, powerful, repeat answers. This is why I love the Lord. And here, watch this. Here's a reason why the psalmist writes Psalm 116. And this is what he says. I love the Lord because he hears me. Have you, ever, have you ever attached the two? That my, my, my relationship with him and my affection towards him and my love towards him is because I know the God of all creation. He actually hears my voice and my supplication. I love the Lord because I bank on it, man. I count on it. It is a foundation of my walk with him and my relationship with him that when I cry out to him, he listens. He hears 
my voice and he hears my supplication. Watch this, watch this. Therefore, because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore, I shall call upon him as long as I live. Because he inclines, and we covered this word in detail last week, and the word inclined, it means when God leans in. It means God bows down. God takes a posture of interest. But yet, the, the amazing thing is in Matthew, the Bible tells us, and Jesus tells us, listen, God knows what you need before you even ask. So is he, is he leaning in because he's missed something? Is he leaning in because he didn't pay attention the first time? Is he leaning in because he has hearing aid and he can't hear? No, 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 no. He already knows because he's a God who's all-knowing. He knows exactly what you need. He knows everything that's going on in your world. He knows your mindset. He knows your activity. He knows everything about you. And he knows what you need before you even ask. But yet the Bible says that when I lift my voice to him, he takes up a posture of interest to what I have to say. See, please hear this. The writing of Scripture, in the, and there, right there, that is for our benefit to know God is interested, even though he already knows what I'm going to ask, God is interested in what I have to say because he loves me. And that drives me to want to cry out to him as long as I live, as long as I live, and to not lose heart. Come on, let's get into this. Philippians 4. Father, we just ask that you would speak to us. Thank you for last week. This is this week. You've given us a new week. And God, I just pray that you would speak into our lives this morning. God, speak to us today here. Now we're here. We're here on purpose. And God, we're here with the ability for you to speak into our lives. Lord, speak to us, please. God, I just ask that no matter where we're at in the season of life, Father, we would dig into this today. Father, we would dig into this thing today. Father, help me to pitch it straight down the middle. God, I believe so many need to hear this, God. No curveballs, God. Just straight down the middle to tee off on it, God, please. Help me to communicate this well. God, give us ears to hear this morning. Church, I ask that you would ask God, God, I need this. Speak to me today. In Jesus' name. Come on, amen. Come on, we're going to talk about the title today is, is Peace Through Prayer. And, and, and what it looks like to really gain a godly peace. Not an artificial peace. Not a fake peace. Not a temporary peace. I'm talking about a real peace. I'm talking about a real peace that only comes through prayer. I'm talking about a real peace that is, watch this now, a supernatural peace. A peace that can only be the peace of God. Not man's peace, not circumstantial peace, not because everything is going good in your life, peace. And watch this, please watch this, not because it's a peace that benefits you. I mean this because there's so many times that I'll have people come up to me, well, Sean, I prayed about it and I have a peace. Okay, well, what are you praying about? Well, there's this guy and he's nice, and he's really kind to me. He doesn't love Jesus. He's got nothing to do with church, and I've been in church all my life, and I just, I prayed about it, and I think I should begin a relationship with this guy, and, and, and I have peace about it. Okay, well, let's go into scripture about your peace, and uh, God would say that's a really stupid, horrible, unwise idea, which God's completely against, so because you prayed about it, and it's a peace that benefits you, watch now, watch now, don't think that it's a godly peace. Be very careful, church. Be very careful. As I sit down with people say, well, I prayed about it. Okay, well, have you walked in forgiveness? Well, no, but I have a peace. Okay, let's go back to a peace that benefits you in your circumstance that will only last a temporary season. Watch this, watch this. Compared to a peace that is a supernatural God-given peace, in the most hurtful, broken places of life, you find yourself at rest. You're like, man, that's impossible. I get bummed when I run out of milk. I get, I get depressed. Like, we only got skim milk? Who the heck bought this? Like, what is going on in my house? Give me 2% plus. What is, like, but you come to a place to say, 
God, I just, I don't need a peace that benefits me, man. I don't need a peace that's artificial. I don't need a peace that's just a fake peace. I need the peace that you talk about, God. I need a peace that Paul wrote about, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Let's read this. Look at this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. It is not your peace. Watch this. It is the peace of God. That is a supernatural peace. Be anxious for nothing. For no, th- like, are you kidding me right now? You're telling me that, that in, in my seasons of life or even when things are good and then things just begin to get rocky and, and the bills are coming in and I lose my job, bankruptcies are on the corner, I get the hospital bill or I get the doctor's office call that is the worst news you could ever imagine or I, and you could go down a whole list of things that are just bad and that you're telling me that Paul actually wrote in the inspired word that I'm supposed to be anxious or worried or concerned about no thing. Yeah, but that's, you see, that's what it says. I mean, I'd love to be your supernatural pastor that just stands here and say, come on, church, it's easy. I do it all day long. I never get concerned. I never get worried. I'm never anxious. I'm never worried about one thing. It's just absolutely not true. So we can all grow in this, and we can all come to a place to see where, where the word is the absolute truth. And, I, and, and watch this. But he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. You mean, I, 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 even the little stupid things that I'm worried about, everything. Because 1 Peter 5, 7 says to cast all your care on him. I love this verse. It is a do-all verse for me. Cast all your care, all your anxiety, all your concern, all of it, every little inch. Listen, listen, watch. Whether you're a 10-year-old or you're 48 years old. Do you think your concerns in life are different? I am 48 years old, and I walk into a place that I am responsible for this, and I'm responsible for my wife, and I'm responsible for my kids, and I'm responsible for my staff. Do you think for a moment, and all of that, as a 48-year-old, it is different for my 12-year-old? But do you think that his concern is any bigger than my concern before the God who created the universe? When the Bible says, cast all your care on him, all, every inch, every bit, from the littlest things to the biggest details, from the simplest things to the biggest things in life, we are called to cast. Does God care about the littlest things? Are we supposed to communicate to him? Listen, church, when you understand it is relationship and is me crying out to God as my father that he absolutely is concerned about the 12-year-old little things about hitting a baseball compared to the 48-year-old who's doing his best to lead a family in a church. And I tell you what, God is concerned about all things. So when the Bible says be anxious for nothing, watch this, how does that happen? But in everything, through prayer, and supplication, let your request be made known to God. But in everything, watch this, with thanksgiving. See, here's the key right here. Here's the idea of this thing called prayer, that we are called to pray with a heart of thanksgiving. I met with a gentleman this week who about a year ago lost his wife. He's a young man and lost his wife. I sat with him this week as I do often and I sat with him for about 45 minutes and it was in the morning and I tell you what, watch this, man. It's a year fresh, but over the whole year, you know the one thing that I've heard from him through the hurt and through the loss and through the loneliness and through the pain, you know what comes from his spirit? You know what oozes out of his heart is the word, Sean, I just find myself being grateful. Sean, I just, there's just something in me that I'm just, I'm thankful. Yes, I hurt. Yes, I'm lonely. And yes, there's pain. But in all of that, there's just something that boils up within my spirit that I find myself being grateful. And I've heard this over the last year. Because watch this, man, he gets this. Church, what's happening when you buy into the truth of God's word? What happens when you lay down self and say, I surrender to his word? His word is alive and powerful, and his word is for me to know him. 
And if he tells me that I have the ability, he will never tell you to do something or that you can attain to something that you never can have. God does not play games, church. He's not a father who's going to dangle the carrot and then pull it right before you get it. He's a God that says, listen, you have the ability to be anxious for nothing. Man, we live, watch this, man, we live in a society, even in the church, those who are truly born again, love Jesus, we still live in a sense of, of a society of depression and a society of hurt and a society of anxiety, a society of so many different medications. I just, honestly, I sit in front of the TV and I watch my cop shows. I'm one who loves to watch the bad guys all die at the end. That's my kind of shows. The only tissue is our tears of joy. We don't do, anyways, anyways. Um, whoop. But you watch these commercials and, and at the end of the depression medicines, one of the side effects is depression. Well, you may have di diarrhea and your left arm will probably fall off. And I mean, you just, and you're just like going. And, 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 and honestly, there's no light in that because there's things that people absolutely need. But the truth is, we live in a society that is overwhelmed by anxiety and depression and hurt and pain. And watch this. They let, watch this, they let their minds get the best of them. Because when God's word, and Paul's writing this to the local church, and he says, listen, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, by everything. And we covered this briefly last week. Prayer is just that, that, that just that, just that conversations with God. Good morning, Lord. Man, praise God. I love you. I thank you for today. This is the day you have made. I shall rejoice and be glad in today. God, cover my family today. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper. God, thank you for the cross and thank you for my salvation. God, I believe this is going to be a great day, even though it's April 29th and it's actually really snowing on April 29th. Somehow, God, you're going to flip this into a good day. I believe, God, you can flip the whole continent where we would become Florida. Florida would become us. The oceans would fall in Olean and Florida would get some snow. It would be marvelous. Marvelous. God, you can do all things. And I'm thankful for, like, that's conversation. I'd love an ocean right here. Wouldn't that be nice? He can flip a global warmer right here. God, come on. Don't feel like it today. It's snowing. I've never known it to snow on the 29th of, of April. Just my thoughts. But anyways, um, there's a purpose, a reason, and we're to be thankful for it. So, but you come to this place. Say, God, in everything, I'm supposed to cast all my cares on you. And what happens if we come back to the start of this whole journey when God leans in? Uh, do I find you praying? Do I find you praying? Do you, do you come to this place to go and go again? Do you come to this place to go and go again? Do you come to this place to know? Do I find you praying? Do I find you praying? Are you leaning in? Are you going to God? Do I find you praying again? Are you covering that thing in prayer? Do you come to that place of, of that, that prayer that just is conversation? And then, and then you have the supplication type of prayer. That is, that is the type of prayer that, that the mother is crying out for a hurting child. That, that is the deep, painful prayer that you begin to cry out because life is flipped upside down and marriage is in the worst condition it could ever possibly be. And you get that doctor's report and you get that financial report and you get that broken news that just crushes you to your core. And that is that supplication, painful type of prayer that Paul is speaking here. So please hear this, church. It covers every inch of our lives to that which is going good and that which is in the place of brokenness to say, God, I can't do this anymore. And can I just say that there's an amazing power. When you come to a place to say, I can't do this anymore. And I need you to take this. And is that place of complete and total surrender. God, I've gone through the time of prayer, but now, God, this is my painful 
prayer and God, I just need you to take this from my son and I need you to take this from my daughter and I need you to take this from my marriage and I'm going to come back again tomorrow and I'm going to come back again tomorrow and I'm going to come back again tomorrow and I am not going to lose heart, God. I am going to stay on target. God, I am not going to lose heart. Why? Because your word says that I'm not called to be anxious in anything, but God, in everything, I'm supposed to, with thanksgiving, cry out to you in prayer and supplication. And watch this. And the peace of God. There's that supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding. How on earth can you get through that? How how do you walk through such a broken season and there's just this thing about you how is it that you walk in the, in the loss of a loved one? How is it that you can actually walk in this, this real life sense of being thankful and grateful? How is it that you, you, your, your meter in your mind is so stuck on the things of Christ and the things of heaven? How is it that you have this peace that the world just doesn't know? Because it's not my peace. It is truly the peace of God. And that is a supernatural peace that surpasses all mindset and all understanding that you come to a place. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I'm trying to follow the script, man. I've completely come to a place to be surrendered to him, that I've cried out to him, and I believe that he's heard my cry, and I've cast all of my care and all of my concern and all of my anxiety, and I've cast it on him because he cares for me. He actually really cares for me. And in that, when I do that and I walk in that place of being thankful, somehow, some way, there's this supernatural peace of God that just floods my spirit and I find myself to be okay. You see, that's what Paul's talking about. And that peace of God, it will guard your heart and your mind. Keep your finger there. Let's flip to Matthew 6 real quick. Matthew 6, I want you to see this. This is Jesus himself, and he's speaking this. And he's gathered the crowd, and the crowd is around. And he goes into verse 27, Matthew 6, verse 27. And who, and who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to your life? Can I just say that is, that is so true? What benefit have you had from worrying? Even a medical professional will tell you, stress is one of the biggest killers of life. Worry will take life. It never adds life. Like nobody in this room is like, man, I've had so much anxiety and I've had, this month has been the worst month of my life. And oh, yippee day, it's been wonderful. I just feel great about it. Like nobody, you get your head examined if that's your case. But you come to a place to say, listen, even Jesus' words, what type of worry could ever add even an hour to your life? And then you, you match that to Philippians and say, listen, be anxious for nothing but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and you come to a place, verse 31, do not worry even then what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will wear for clothing. For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But watch this, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you and I love this verse verse 34 so do not worry about tomorrow how many of us can I be honest man how many of us are so ahead on our worry that we're months in advance about worrying like legit I don't know how I'm gonna pay that college bill he's 10 relax like (laughs) come on Start saving. Maybe today's a great day. But no, but I'm serious. We get so worried. We haven't even had kids yet, and you're worried about your children, and you're not yet pregnant. Like, how is it that we come to this place that we are so futuristic and are worried that we are so concerned about so many things that are not even close to touching us? And I love it, man. You hear it in my house often. Well, listen, they'll, they'll ask me something, and they'll bring some worry to me. i like, listen, Jesus may come back tomorrow. I'm good. Like, we'll worry about that when that happens. The truth is, Jesus may come back tomorrow. I'm not going to be concerned with that. I'm not going to get my mind around that. I'm not going to walk in depression on that. That isn't even going to happen for months down the road. Maybe Jesus could come back before that. What a waste of time and worry. And I love this because this is what it says. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Have you ever noticed that when you stop worrying, it really just seems to work itself out? 
That's true. When you really have come to a place to cast all your care on him. You walk in that place to say, I am not going to be worried about this. This is so much past tomorrow. This is so much not even happening today. And Jesus may come back. And man, this thing may iron itself out all by itself. The Bible says this because today has enough trouble of its own. What happens when you can find that peace that really comes through prayer? J.D. read this morning about set your minds on things above and not on the things of the earth. What happens when you really come to a place to believe I'm going to set my mind? Man, it's, it's all in the mind. I'm going to set my mind on things above. I'm going to set my mind on things where Christ sits. My mind is going to be stuck on him and not on the things of the world. What happens if you had a mind shift? Even, even today, there was a shift in your mindset. There was that shift that said, listen, I'm going to let peace be my arbitrator. Colossians 3.15, you got to see this. I want you to see this. Great verse. Great verse because it's about, it's about the peace of Christ. Again, a supernatural peace. Colossians 3.15, it's up on the screen. Let the peace of Christ rule. And that word rule means the arbitrator. Like when you really are walking in life, in a true life with the peace of Christ rules your heart. That, that, please hear this, man. That, that kicks to the curb the artificial fake peace. That kicks to the curb that temporary peace. It kicks to the curb while I prayed about it. Yeah, but God says it's very simple. You don't need to pray about it. He says it in his word that that's just stupid. Why are you praying about it? No, I love that. I love when people come to me and say, well, I'm praying about it. Well, why? Because you already, already gave the answer. You don't want to pray about something God already gave the answer to. Why are you praying about it? maybe because you want an answer that's not really from God at all and you're trying to walk in a sense of being okay with it when God says he's not okay with it listen church this is a game that we play what happens when you have a supernatural peace that comes from Christ and I love it I don't have time to get into it John 14 15 and 16 you got Jesus Christ the son of God he's, he's about to take his exit and he gets his disciples together and said listen listen guys this is the deal and he makes reference that this is the deal for you and me generations forever that's us this is the deal I'm going to leave watch this but my peace I leave with you Listen, listen, when you get that, my peace, it's not, it's not a fake peace. It's not an artificial. Jesus himself said, this is my peace. Listen, Jesus is the prince of peace. He knows peace. He understands peace. He is very peace. That is who he is. That is his character. And he says, listen, listen, it's not your peace. I leave. What a waste if you just walk in your own peace because it's temporary and shallow. But Jesus says this, listen, I'm leaving, but man, I've given you something that is forever for you in every circumstance, in every hurt, in every pain, when life is tragic, when things go upside down and backwards, when we walk in that place of confusion, remember, Jesus said, no, listen, in all of those seasons, you have my peace to tap into. It's so good. Let that be the arbitrator. Let that rule your heart. we're all called in one body and to be thankful. You see what happens when you get a sense of what it means to be grateful and to be thankful even in hurt and pain. You come to play and say, God, I'm done playing this artificial game of peace. I need a supernatural peace and it's the peace of God and it passes anything that I could even comprehend. I don't know how it happened, but I, I find myself in a place of rest in the midst of crazy, in the midst of hurt, in the midst of pain. There's one of my favorite verses on peace. You've heard me say it many times if you've been here any length of time. It's found in Isaiah 26. It's verses 3 and 4. 
you got to see, man, I grew up in an amazing home. Mom and dad loved Jesus, raised us up to love Jesus, raised us up to worship God, love him with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength. But man, there's just moments, you know, there's moments in life that things just don't go your way. There are moments of life that are broken moments. There's moments of life that are tragic and hurtful. And, and one statement that my dad would say repeatedly in our home, ever since little boys that you could hear, is, is this, Sean, don't let it steal your joy. Sean, that's not allowed to take your joy. Don't let that person steal your joy. Don't let that, that no steal your joy. Man, you didn't get that job. Don't let that steal your joy. That position will come around the corner. There's God's timing. Be thankful. Maybe there's something else that God wanted for you to do. Don't let it steal your joy. Sean, you got to trust in the Lord. And watch this. Watch this. Sean, no. No stinking thinking. No, 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 you're not allowed to think like that. No, Sean, not my house. There's no stinking thinking in my house. God has a plan. God has, Sean, how deep does your trust level go? That's a serious question, church. What's the depth of our trust? Do we really say, oh, I trust you. Woo, everything is great and I trust you. And then all hell breaks loose. And the bottom falls out. And I hear my dad say, don't let it steal your joy. find that place of peace. Seriously, tap into a supernatural peace. Shine, no, 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 no stinking things. No, 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 set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Church, what happens? Watch this and we'll close with this. What happens when you have that that meter of or your mindset is, is, is that meter in your mind. Watch this. In that meter in your mind, on the negative side, do you have a peg to negativity? Even when seasons are good, you're waiting for the other ball to drop, man. You're waiting for that. Oh, it's just going to get worse. It just can't stay good. Come on. Come on, you got to hear me because there's so many times we live and the left side of that negative meter, man, and it's just always negative. Even when things are good, even when things are right, you're just waiting for something to go wrong because you got that negativity about you. What happens if we, what happens if we shift this morning to that place of saying, no, no, I'm going to begin to peg it at a place of peace and I'm going to begin to set my mind on things above and I'm going to I'm getting out of that negativity I'm not going to have no stinking thinking even in a, a horrible situation God I believe that I'm crying out to you and I believe in my time of prayer and I believe in my supplication God you've heard me and I'm going to lean in again and I'm going to lean in again and I'm going to lean in again and you've heard me and you've heard me and you've heard me and then you come to this reality saying God I can't do it actually come to a place, watch this in your spirit to say, God, I trust you. Because here it is, as 26 says this, the steadfast of mind. You will keep in perfect peace. I love it. It's God who keeps us in perfect peace. It, it's, can I just remind you again this morning, it's the steadfast of mind. And, and there's no question in what God's word tells us to put our mind towards. Set your mind on things above. Fix your mind and your attention on Christ. Fix your attention on the hope that he has for you. Man, the steadfast of mind. God, you said that you would keep me in perfect peace. Watch this, watch this. I love this. For the steadfast of mind, you will keep in perfect peace because, watch this, because he trusts in you. God, you said that you would keep me in perfect peace because I trust in you. And this word trust, it means dependent. It means that God, I am completely, totally relying upon you. Can I ask you, where's, where's your, your meter at? this morning, right here, right now, as we sit in this place. Are you, are you in that place that, man, I am, I am, this negativity is just overwhelming and I, I have this steadfast mind that's just, it is just stuck on that which is negative. I can't be thankful. I can't find something. I'm so worried and I'm so filled with anxiety and that meter is just over here and it just seems like it's stuck. What happens when we shift Say, God, today's a change because today I want to come to a place to say, I want to trust in you. And God, that 
that perfect peace, that peace that is supernatural, that peace. Listen, my circumstance may not ever change, but my mindset can change and my trust can change. And then supernatural peace can come in and I can find myself at a place of rest. Trust in the Lord forever. For in God the Lord, we have an everlasting rock. And this morning, I was up at about 4.30 this morning and just out of nowhere, Isaiah 40.12. Just came to my heart and just began to meditate on, on Isaiah 40.12 and I want to read it to you. And, it, and it's so good because it's a song of old that we used to sing in Sunday school as little children. I just think it matters, church. It matters who you see God as, is the one you're saying, God, can I really trust you with this? It matters that you see God right. If you want that supernatural peace and you want to walk in a sense to say, I am going to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, then I cry out to him and I know that God leans in and I know that he's interested in me and I know that I'm going to stick my mind upon him. I'm not going to have stinking thinking. No, 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 you're not allowed to steal my joy. Watch this. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. And he's marked off the heavens with a span. Remember that old Sunday school song, he holds the whole world in his hand, right? And, and you just sing it. And I honestly, it was so real to me this morning. And just knowing, God, you do. You hold the whole world, the whole universe, God, from here to here. You're giving us a picture that, God, you're in control. You're never not in control. God, whatever I got to go through, you know about it before I ever entered into it. God, I need to trust you because truly, God, you hold the whole world in his hand. And man, I honestly, I got on YouTube this morning and I just, it was just something just special for me. I found a video of just a bunch of kids, little children just singing. He holds the whole world in his hand. And I started singing it. God loved it. No one else was with me, so no one else could tell me Stop. God loves my voice because he gave it to me. And I'm honestly, I'm just singing, God, you hold the whole world in your hand. Can I trust you with this? Do I really believe that you've got this? Can I really believe that you're in control? Can I really get to that place that I'm not going to let worry overtake me? I'm not going to let anxiety take me out. My God, I need that supernatural peace because I trust in you. And you do hold the whole world in your hand. Can you just bow your heads just for a moment? We'll close up. When God leans in, place to say I need peace man I'm a wreck I'm broken in so many places and I need that supernatural peace I just think it's that sense of 1 Peter 5 7 where it says cast and that word cast it means to throw throw all your anxiety on him He's concerned for you because he cares for you. The God who holds the whole world in his hand, he has such a deep concern for you. That you would cast all your care on him because he cares for you. this place to be anxious for nothing. And we would just begin to see this shift take place. And I need that negative meter to go to the other side. God, you're in control. God, I trust you. 
Father, we just, in this moment, Lord, I'm asking you that we would walk in grace and we'd walk in peace. God, we just cover this congregation. We cover this community. We cover our families. God, that you would just come to a place. That God, we'd walk in grace. And Father, we would know peace. That we would know peace, a supernatural peace in the midst of crazy. Father, I just ask in Jesus' name that there would be a harmony that would come to those in this moment that just begin to cast all their care on you and they begin to walk in that place and say, God, you're in control. I'm reminded again today that, God, you've got this. I'm going to come again to you, God. And God, I'm going to come again to you, God. And God, I'm going to come again to you because you hear me. And I will not lose heart. I just pray everyone in this place, God, that we would tap into this this morning. It's real. We would tap into your love and understanding that, God, you are in control. Everything is going to be okay, God. Because you're in control and we trust you. And we trust you. I just ask that you would just simply get a picture in your mind. of God just truly being able to hold the whole universe in his hand. It's not just the earth, it's the whole universe. It says he holds the heavens, that's the universe, in the span of his hand. Just get that picture in your mind. So God, you're in control. take this worry from me. God, take this anxiety from me. God, you've got this. God, you've got this. From today forward, I will repeat, God, you've got this. God, you hold the whole world in your hand. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. God, I want to come back to you when it gets harder and say, God, I trust you. You've got this. I'm going to come back again when it gets harder and say, God, thank you. I love you. God, thank you for this. God, I'm going to trust you for this. God, you've got a purpose and you've got a plan. And God, it cannot steal my joy. It will not have my peace. God, I will have a peace that surpasses all understanding. God, you've got the whole world in your hand. God, you are in control. You got this. Repeat. Repeat again and again and again. And you begin to see what happens to your spirit. Well, there will be this supernatural peace that comes. Father, put this thing in our hearts, please. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church. Come on.